Hi, this is David Brannon, disability lawyer. In this video, I'm going to give you a walkthrough of the medical report that your doctor fills out for CPP disability benefits. Now, you can find this at uh, CPP Disability Service Canada's own online site, or you can get it right here on Resolute Legal uh, as part of our uh, CPP Disability, the Ultimate Guide. So, if let's just go find it here. So, here's the table of contents. We go down to list of all forms. And you'll see that just popped me down here. And here it is right here, medical report for CPP disability. This is the 2018 edition. I think this is still the most recent version, but we do update them pretty regularly. So you will want to check to make sure you have the right one. All right, so let's open this thing up. Now, here we go. So this is a form. This is the medical report that goes with your CPP disability application. To apply for CPP disability, you have to have the application and this, both of them, in order to be approved. So let's take a look at this. Um, so page one is some instructions here at the top. It says that you fill out part one and your doctor fills out part two. So part one is just right here. You fill in your information and uh, that's pretty much it. Pretty easy. Then you would basically take this to your doctor or arrange to get it to them so that they can fill out part two. Oh, sorry. Part two, you do fill out as well. This is your consent to allow your doctor and Service Canada and CPP Disability to communicate with your doctor. Again, I've covered this in previous videos. I basically just recommend, unless you're very sophisticated with this, you're better off just giving the consent and allowing the communications. Better to have the communications with, than to not allow it and you not be able to really deliver on uh, getting all the information and stuff yourself. So easier here to just give the, give the ability for the communication. Now, if I was representing you or our firm, we would not want you to sign that, but um, that's different. We're sophisticated in doing these. We're able to manage it and we have the resources to manage it. Most people by themselves are not going to have the resources to be able to manage this effectively, especially if you're dealing with a disability. So you're better off just giving the consent. So here's some instructions to the doctor. This is the part for them to fill out. There's just a little bit of instructions here explaining what CPP disability is, what it means to be severe and prolonged, talks about um, how they can be compensated for filling this report out for you. Uh, CPP will reimburse them up to $85 for filling it out and et cetera. It tells them where they should send it. So this is good. This updated report is much better than the old version because it gives some instructions to the doctors and it tells them exactly where to go to be able to get to send this in. It's also how they get paid. This first part here, section three and four, just talks about how long they've known you. Again, this is the doctor fills this out. You should not fill this out for the doctor. That is not a good thing to do. Even if the doctor asks you to do it, you should not. It just can create credibility problems. And uh, section four is whether this has anything to do with an expedited or terminal illness. Usually they just would say no there. Section five is where they fill in information about your medical condition. You'll see here, they're just asking for what it's called, the IC, ICD-9 codes. Your doctors will know what that means. Those are universal codes um, that go with every medical condition. It's not that important to really go through, but I guess Service Canada probably just wants it for their own tracking and things like that. They'll talk about when your your symptoms started. They'll talk about your impairments. Impairments would be like the limitations that happen because of a medical condition. Um, so it can be impairments in movement, impairments in thinking, uh, impairments in your energy level, these kinds of things. So this is where they'll talk about the impairments and the functional limitations. So the impairments are these limitations, the functional limitations. So if you have a if you have impairments with mobility and with your energy levels that can cause functional impairments with work inability to dress yourself you know um, de deal with day-to-day -day activities and that kind of thing that's where these functional impairments doctors will usually mention a bit in there now the prognosis is important so if a doctor puts improved that's pretty much a you're dead in the water with this claim um, i hate to use that phrase but again you have to have a prolonged disability so if your disability is not prolonged, then it doesn't matter how serious it is right now. They won't approve your claim. You can put approve. The doctor could put improve here, but they'd have to clarify that it's going to improve, but not to the point where the person could work. Um, but if it's deteriorate, remain the same, most doctors will put unknown. Then in those cases, those would all fit and qualify you for disability. Again, this expected duration, if it's less than a year, again, you're not going to fit the prolonged criteria. So it would, doctors would need to anticipate that they expect it to be more than a year from the time they're writing this, that you still are going to have problems. And then they'll say whether this is a, a continuous thing and that episodic recurrent just means that it is happening, but not all the time. Like you have it now, maybe it'll come back in two weeks or once a month. 
um, they'll that's just to talk a bit about more of your condition. Here's where they fill in your medications and things like that. That's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and then uh, again, this this is just for the next medical condition. They go through the same thing. Then they talk about the patient's employment situation. So what they know about your situation. That's why it's good for you to make sure you're there to answer questions for the doctor. They may not be up on all this. So they'll want to know whether the doctor has recommended you stop working. This is pretty critical. If they haven't or not discussed it with you, again, you're not going to be approved. So it's important that you have this discussion with your doctor and know basically what your doctor is going to say before you get them to fill this thing out. So the doctor says you've never discussed it with them or that they're not recommending you stop working, you will not be approved. It's just a waste of time to send this thing in. Okay, this is just if they've had a terminal condition. If you have a terminal condition, that puts you in a different category. Um, when do you expect your patient return to work? This is kind of a trick question because it, uh, it, you notice it presumes that you're going to go back to work, right? Um, there's nothing here that says not going to return to work, I guess unknown, but anyway, it just shows you how these things can be kind of stilted. So your doctor will have to put something in here. If they put six to 12 months, again, you're not going to be approved because you're not going to be prolonged 12 to 24. Yeah, maybe over 24 then that really weighs towards you being off, you know, for quite a while. Um, and then there's this unknown. That's a lot of doctors will check that. They'll talk about what type of work. If you are going to go back, they want to know if there's going to be any residual disability. So even if you get to a point where you can go back to work, is it going to be your usual work modified another type doctors sometimes will often they'll click other and put uncertain, but again, some doctors won't know what to put. They'll just click usual work. And again, if they if, if the doctor is saying you're going to go back to your usual work, that implies that there's no impairment or problems and you're probably not going to be approved. Other relevant information, this is where the doctors can put just things that are coming up, uh, any consultations, the prognosis, that kind of thing. It's again, doctors, you, this form does not give doctors a lot of direction. So you can just get it just can go anywhere here. Doctors can write some things that are very helpful, things that have no bearing on anything, some things that are not helpful. It just can go really anywhere. A lot will depend on your doctor and how well they can fill this out and how, not so much how well they can fill it out, like how descriptive are they? How much thought are they going to put into it? Um, it's that kind of thing. If they're just doing it in a rush and not really taking time to think about it, then it can be detrimental to you for sure. Um, they ask about supporting documents. And the doctor can include some of these things. You should encourage your doctor to send along as much notes as possible. The doctor might want you to pay for that because that's certainly not going to be covered in the $85 fee, I don't think. Uh, or they may feel like they should be paid more than $85 to copy their whole file and send it. But I would always want my clients to have their full family physician file in medical records, everything, all the notes, clinical notes, reports, everything going back at least a few years before your disability. So you can see the full picture of what's going on. Um, this is where your doctor makes a declaration, basically saying that they believe this is accurate and it just sort of makes it drives home the point that they should not be embellishing things or, or trying to sway things in your favor, that they should do this accurately because they're going to be held to account by assigning this official document. Now it talks about here where to send the report. Uh, again, here's your list of disability processing centers. This is the same standard across Canada. These are the processing centers and for each province dealing with disability. You'll see some provinces are doubled up because there's one processing center for more than one province, but it's always the same place. As long as, they, as your stuff gets sent to this processing center, everything is fine. Where problems arise is when you drop try to drop them off to local service Canada centers that are not designated for CPP disability processing. Here's a list of grave medical conditions. These would be ones where like you're expected not to do well um, and they'll rush your application. So that's just to let the doctors know. Here they give some examples of doctors about what are physical limitations, functional limitations. And it says here restrictions related to changing body position, maintaining body position, this kind of thing. It just gives the doctor some ideas of the kind of uh, limitations that people can have. Here they give an example how to fill out for each of the medical conditions. And remember there was space for three. If you have more than three, the doctor can fill out more, but this sort of gives them an example. So that's it. So really it's not that big of a form. It's like a nine page form. You fill out a page, the doctor, you fill it up two pages, the doctor fills out the rest. And this must go along with your medical application. They will accept uh, 
even if they don't fill out this form, sometimes they will just simply accept a report from the doctor, a narrative report, as long as it covers a lot of these same things. So usually if we're taking over a case where doctors already sent this in, we would get them to write a supplemental report. We give them some more structure. Usually you're safer just to have the doctor fill out this form, but give them some more directions on how to do a little bit of a better job with it or what kind of information should be talked about. That can be helpful because sometimes doctors just put the bare minimum on this form and it doesn't really add a lot. That's why it's important to get your full medical file as well. Okay, so there you have it. That is a walkthrough of this medical report form. I hope you find this useful. If you like this video, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you back here next time.